Hey, hello everybody, my name is Slime Beast. how are you doing? Uh, I have something interesting to talk to you about today. The Lolliet, who is a user you might have seen in the comments on videos here or on Midnight Marinera or, you know, Dead Palettes channel, you know, all sorts of places like that. Or you may have seen him on the Too Spooky Discord or the TooSpooky.com forum. Or you might have seen him somewhere else. Uh, my cat just fell off my lap, that's good. All right, I'm not I'm not re-recording this. I've started this three times because of shenanigans. This is it. We're running with this one. Uh, the Lolliet wrote a no sleep story. Now he set out from the beginning, uh, saying that he wanted to write a generic, bland no sleep story, and see how far it would get. Uh, so he asked on Twitter. Uh, he asked people to vote on what the subject would be. He gave like s several uh, sort of vague, bland, cliche topics. Um, and I think something like Unearthly Being or Mysterious Being won the poll. Uh, so he wrote a story about a mysterious being. Now, he titled the post, I added a random guy on MySpace in 2005, comma, and now I wish I hadn't. Uh, if you're familiar with my videos at all, uh, you know that I have sort of a saying that if you add, and now I wish I hadn't, to any f any sentence... It becomes a no-sleep title. Um, I bought avocados at Whole Foods, comma, and now I wish I hadn't. Boom, there, it's a, it's a no-sleep title now. Uh, I, I started dating... <laughs> I started dating a stripper, comma, and now I wish I hadn't. There you go. Um, but yeah, so he wanted to see how far he could get, and wouldn't you know it, number one, uh, his generic no-sleep story written to be bad, Number one. Voted number one on the front page. Now, the moderators caught wind, I think, of the fact that this was like a trolling post. Uh, sort of a sting operation to see, you know, like a test to see how far you could get. Uh, I think they caught wind of it because they told him to remove And Now I Wish I Hadn't from the title. Which is kind of an odd thing. I said directly to a moderator uh, that... You know, that was sort of like my joke, and lo and behold, somebody tells them to re remove, and now I wish I hadn't from the title. So it was reposted, and now it's not as high as it was. It was at number one, now it's not as high anymore. But it, it says something that it got to number one in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the story, and we're going to see what got voted all the hell the way up to the front page of, of No Sleep. Uh, we got some, I want to I wanna go through some of the titles here. Because they asked him to remove, and now I wish I hadn't, because of their rule against clickbait titles. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the clickbait titles that have stayed, and that they don't care about, uh, until we get to our story we're going to read. So we've got Make Damn Sure. Uh, I haven't done my laundry since. Do everything you can, too. What they don't tell you. Uh... Uh, this is arguable, arguable. Uh, my sister won't stop crying. Can you help? You wouldn't believe. Uh, scariest story I've ever heard. I mean, we could go on here. There, there's just tons and tons of clickbait titles that aren't touched. So I don't believe <laughs> that they uh, asked him to... I don't believe they deleted his post uh, because it you know, was a clickbait title. I think that they caught on that it was trolling. That's my personal opinion, and... You know that doesn't. It doesn't matter what you think uh, about my personal opinion, because I know moderators sometimes will watch this channel to see what I'm saying about them or whatever. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm I'm anticipating the drama coming out of this, but all right. I added a random guy on MySpace in 2005, and we're gonna mentally add comma, and now I wish I hadn't. My mother never understood my fascination with the band Gorillas. The Gorillas. <laughs> We're already, we're already off to a good start. I wasn't really surprised by this, considering that she was a die-hard country fan, but it always annoyed me as a teenager. I had just gotten into my freshman classes in Naperville Central when the band dropped their second major album, Demon Days. Like most of their fans, I loved the album when El Manana... I, I'm not a big, huge Gorillaz fan, unfortunately. Uh, being my favorite track out of the entire thing. My boyfriend, Thomas, seemed to only enjoy the album when we were studying together, quote-unquote studying. 
The album took over every aspect of my life when it came to entertainment. The only other thing I spent my free time on was MySpace. I, of course, joined the Gorillaz groups on the bleh, Gorillaz group on the site, and that was when I met him. Bum bum bum. His name was George Smith, <laughs> which would have set off my creep alarm if it weren't for me being a stupid teen. He started the conversation with a simple hello. I asked who he was, and George told me he was a fellow fan from the Gorillaz group. We spent hours and hours talking about the band's music, from Clint Eastwood to fire coming out of, a mon of the monkey's head, and soon began to talk about each other's lives. I told George about Thomas, how he was such a great boyfriend. Yeah, Thomas was a perv, but he also listened to me when I was having a bad day and took me out on the weekends. This seemed to annoy George, as he told me that Thomas was probably just trying to get in my pants, which in retrospect was probably right on the nose. George, George is a good guy. I added George on MySpace, and I'm glad I did. That's going to be like the opposite of a no-sleep story. The last thing he asked me was what my address was. I had watched enough to catch a predator with my mom to know this was a big, fat, no-can-do. Was to catch a predator on back then? I don't know. During the days of MySpace and the original Gorillaz albums? Probably was. I don't know. So I told him that we shouldn't talk anymore. He said he understood and apologized, which took me by surprise. George seemed like a good guy. He never mentioned sex once, aside from warning me about Thomas, so I felt like I had insulted him when I said we couldn't talk. I made the mistake of telling him we could talk again tomorrow, but that I just couldn't tell him where I lived. He sent me a smiley emoji and said that was fine. He just wanted to talk to someone as cool as me. I put that I was offline on my profile, and before I went to sleep, I checked George's profile. He had a character from anime I didn't recognize as his profile picture. A cute guy with black hair that had his bangs over his left eye. I think that was just a picture of Lisa Left Eye Lopez. It said that he was 16, and he lived in Illinois. It was a pretty normal profile, and while the picture made me think he might be lying about his age, I wasn't any better with my noodle profile pic. Noodle. Oh, from uh, Gorillaz. I know that. I know that reference. I'm hip with the kids of 2005 or whatever the fuck. That morning I slipped out of the house. It was Saturday and I was ready to spend the day with Thomas, the tank engine. Wait a minute. Is that the twist? Is this Thomas the tank engine? I think I figured it out. Mom wasn't exactly okay with Thomas and I, considering that Thomas was a senior and I was just a freshman. I don't really blame her now, but as a kid I really didn't care. Oh, Thomas was cool to me. He had a car, and he was willing to spend time to listen to what I had to say, as opposed to my mom, who always just told me I'd understand when I was older. Of course, being older, I know I now know she was right most of the time, but it just but I just felt good about Thomas around Thomas. All right, we're gonna take a break. I'm I'm fucking up too much, so we're gonna take a break. How you guys in the comments doing? Oh, you're doing good? I see you're all saying that you're doing good and your lives are going perfectly. Cool. Good to know that none of you are having any problems. It was the usual Saturday with him, and we went to the mall. Wait, we went to the mall after getting McDonald's for breakfast. How did McDonald's end up like this? We looked around Hot Topic and Justice, and then we headed over to his place. Thomas had bought me a Gorillaz shirt and a new pair of skinny jeans which he said made me look amazing. So let me guess, I'm going to guess right now that Thomas is going to try to uh, force the narrator into something and George is going to show up out of nowhere and kill him. That's my guess. Uh, you know, this this story is, is written <laughs> to be predictable and to be bland, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. The second we got into his house, we headed to his room and I tried on my new skirt, shirt and jeans. Thomas's eyes popped out of his head when I told him to uncover his eyes, and he took no time to come over and start making out with me. We really got into it, his hot breath in my ear as he nibbled it while I scratched down his back, but the second I felt his fingers slide to the button of my pants, I pushed him away. What George Smith had sent to me the night before flashed into my head, and I told Thomas that I had to go. I had never seen my boyfriend get angry before, but his face got red as a tomato as he started to scream at me. He called me a cachtis and a whore, and I was a spoiled little slut who needed to be taught a lesson. Hmm. Fifty shades, <laughs> fifty shades of no sleep? I ran out of the house as fast as I could. I could hear Thomas's heavy footsteps behind me getting closer and closer. I felt the cold winter air rush past me as I ran into the middle of the street, Thomas yelling at me to come back. 
That's when I heard the car speed up and the sick sound of metal hitting flesh. That's George. I turned around and saw Thomas, or rather his body. His leg was broken to the point where it was almost wrenched off his body. His head was smashed like a rotten pumpkin, and his guts were slowly soaking out of his belly. I couldn't help but scream as I saw my late boyfriend's body crumpled, a crumpled mess of blood and guts. I hadn't noticed, I I read ahead a little bit, I hadn't noticed that the car that hit him had stopped until I heard it honk. It was a black Camaro. The license plate read Smith. (laughs) Thomas's parents came home and saw his body. (laughs) They came home right then. (laughs) Where, oh my God. I had never seen a grown man cry before Thomas's dad, and I hope I never see it again. I told the police everything I could, but I left out the part about George Smith. Well, that, that's the most important part. They wouldn't have believed me anyway, so I felt like there was no point. After a week, I went to check my MySpace friends. George Smith's profile had been deleted, but he left me one message. I told you. I got rid of my MySpace account that night, and I avoided the site altogether after that. It soon fell out of fashion in favor of Facebook, but I didn't get an account on there until recently. I moved out of state to get my master's degree. George is coming back, I bet. And my mom wanted me to get an account so that she could keep in contact with me. My life has been stable since, but the image of Thomas's body was something I could just couldn't forget. However, here we go. That's not the reason I'm posting this here. I just jumped onto Facebook to message my mom about my test scores and how I was doing. But when I got online, there was a friend request waiting for me. It was a friend request from George Smith. So yeah, George Smith, the next great uh, horror icon. Uh, See, this is the thing, you know. You could assume what would happen if Thomas caught up with her you could assume of course but you don't know for sure so you know killing him was like maybe he was just gonna uh grab her by the lapels and say i hate you we're broken up now and then he would run away crying i don't know (laughs) but yeah this is a thing uh added to the site to see uh, you know it was the the story is competently written that's the thing uh, I think, Lolliet, I think you made a slight mistake in that you didn't write a story that was total dog shit. You wrote a good story uh, in terms of competent writing, etc. and so forth. So if it was like, if it was utter dog shit, we could say, okay, this is a challenge for everybody watching this video. Go to No Sleep and post a story that's utter dog shit, but try to make it look legit. <laughs> and then see if it gets voted up to number one. Oh, man. But yeah, I just wanted to share this experience with you guys. I wanted to read this story to you guys and let you know what happened. Um, I think we need more stuff like this. Um, not necessarily exactly this, but you know, things where if a site is claiming to have standards and you see the standards violated all the time, like creepypasta.com, of course, you know my history with them. They, they don't have any quality control. Uh, no sleep doesn't follow its own rules, different things like that. We need more things where people kind of troll them and show exactly how uh, ridiculous it is. Because I think there was, a while back, there was a book uh, that was in sort of the news called, I think it was called Atlanta Nights or something. But what it was was um, a group of authors got together and they wrote, like, the worst book they could envision. And it was, like, a really, really terrible, terrible book. They even, like, copy and pasted pages, so there were, like, multiple of the same page. And then they submitted that book to, uh, like, self-publishing companies that claimed that they had editors who would look over your story for you and stuff like that. And they submitted that book to those sites, and nobody ever looked over the stories. They were just offered to be printed as is. And so they basically proved that those publishing sites did not have any editors looking over the stories because it would come back as, yeah, your story is great. It's, you know, approved for printing. You know, we didn't find any major issues. And they were like, the whole book is major issues. So, I mean, you know, things like that can be helpful uh, in exposing uh, people who aren't exactly doing what they claim to be doing. But, yeah. It doesn't have to be no sleep or creepypasta.com, just anything in general. If you if you find some place uh, that seems to be all talk and no action, you know, see if, see what you can get past them. 
and then send it to me at slimebeast on Twitter.